Hello Interwebs, welcome to Let's Fix Computers. Um, in this video we're going to talk about webcams and the state of cheap webcams from Amazon. Um, so uh, this video was prompted by the fact that um, uh, someone asked me what webcam that they should buy and immediately I turned around and said get a Logitech C920 or a C930 which is the camera I normally use as my face cam in most of my videos. However the problem is this is 2020 and prices are sky high and when I actually looked up um, how much a Logitech C920 or a C930 actually cost, uh, I nearly fell out my seat because on Amazon right now the best kind of price I could find for someone who actually had one in stock ready to ship was about £150, which is that's ludicrous money. Uh, this the Logitech C920 and C930 that should cost about 40 or 50 pounds, you know, like 60 dollars, that kind of price. You know, 150 pounds is you're off your rocker kind of price. That's not viable. Um, and you know, as just for the lols, I looked up the cost of my Logitech Brio, which is the camera that we're using at the moment and my main bench camera. And those we I originally bought mine for 180. Uh, the current cost of them is about 250 pounds. For a webcam. This is nuts. So yeah, Logitech cameras are just completely priced out of all proportion right now. So I bought another selection of cameras to see if any of them are actually worth getting. Now obviously the cheap ones are going to be pretty bad, but are any of these viable for use as either just simply having a FaceTime meeting with someone, or failing that, could any of them be used for some basic content creation? So uh, the cameras I bought from worst to best uh, I got the cheapest 1080p webcam on Amazon, which cost me £10. I bought the Amazon Choice 1080p webcam, which was about £20. Uh, I bought a 1080p webcam made by Orki, um, which was the first sort of brand that I recognised. Orki make mobile, char mobile phone chargers and stuff like that, um, which I quite like. So I saw that one, I was like, that's a brand that I like, I'll buy that one. And that one was about £30 on uh, a uh, Black Friday deal. Um, and then finally, I'm going to match this against my existing Logitech C920 cam, which I've had for years and years and years. And for the lols, here's my Brio as well. Now, obviously, the Brio is in another class to these other cameras, and it's not a fair test. It does 60 frames a second and stuff like that. Um, but we're going to put it in there just so you've got a comparison as to what the worst camera looks like to what the best webcam looks like. So uh, let's get them all on the go. I'm going to test these one by one. I'm going to do a test in my sort of studio lighting conditions. Right now I have two big bright LED lights pointed at my face and I've got an LED baton above my head. I don't have a hair light like a proper studio would have because I don't have room for one. But as you can see, I've got moderately good studio lighting here. I'm going to do tests with these lights on and off so we can test them in best case scenarios and more realistic scenarios. Just a quick extra bit before we get into it, uh, because in case I didn't make it clear enough, do keep in mind that none of these cameras will stand up to professional equipment, especially the microphones on them. So. I might talk a little bit about sort of, oh, you could use this for content creation and stuff like that. But obviously, bearing in mind, I mean in a pinch. I mean if your budget is zero and you're trying to spend the minimum amount of money possible. It's very easy to say sort of, oh, I use a digital SLR and it gives a picture that's much better than any of these. Of course it does. That's a real camera, you know. So just keep that in mind that we are talking about the bare minimum to actually get something that is usable here. Um, so yeah, and also with the microphones, keep in mind that um, although I'm showing everything with the filters off, uh, most modern programs like Discord and Zoom and stuff like that will do a bit of background noise filtering and echo cancellation and stuff like that, which will make these microphones sound better. So keep that in mind because when you hear the raw output, you are hearing the absolute raw output. So yeah, let's get to it. In a surprise to absolutely no one, a £10 webcam that is the cheapest I could find on Amazon is pretty awful. Um, I did have a look into the driver settings on this webcam and it had none. Uh, everything on the driver settings was completely greyed out. The only slider that wasn't greyed out was an exposure slider and that did nothing. Changing it to manual or automatic and moving the slider around made no change to the picture whatsoever. So as you can see, this is pretty bad. The, it's also smeary as hell. We've got big bright lights on me here. It's apparently at 30 frames a second. 
make of this what you will. We've also got quite a narrow field of view. I think we're at 60 degrees field of view. Um, and this is getting a little bit cozy. A normal camera should be 78 uh, or 75 or thereabouts. And obviously with this one, I'm sitting about, I'm about a meter away from the camera, maybe a bit closer than that. If you had, if you want, had another family member or a friend who you wanted to be in the frame with you, you're both going to have to sit pretty far back from the camera to fit into frame. Um, in terms of sound quality, the microphone on this one is actually broken. When I was doing some initial testing, I did get some uh, audio from it. Um, however, it was bleh, it was usable. It's a lot like the picture, really. It's better than nothing at all. Um, but you certainly couldn't use it to record anything. You know, if you wanted someone to hear the sound of your voice, if you were doing streaming, it's completely unusable. Um, so yeah, in a surprise to no one, the cheapest webcam that money can buy is awful and apparently not very reliable either. Um, in terms of the construction quality of it, it's very plasticky and it has no lens on it whatsoever. It just has the sensor module on a circuit board in a plastic box with a plastic cover over the top of it. And in fact, I did actually remove that plastic cover because it was actually uh, slight, the, the edges of the circle that it was looking through were slightly in frame and it was causing, uh, it was causing a dark spot about there-ish. So this camera is terrible. Um, I'll switch the lights off because I said I would for posterity, but this cam, don't buy this camera. <laughs> Right, we're now in lower light conditions, so all we've got now, it's it's pretty dim outside. There's no there's no um, daylight to speak of in here. I've got the um, the main room lights on over there. However, this area of the room is kind of in shadow, so this is fairly representative of sitting at a desk in a in a uh, a room that only has a single light source in it. So like a bedroom or a study where you don't have a desk light illuminating your face at all. Uh, or if you have a light source behind you so your face is in shadow. Um, and yeah, as you can see, I'm still visible, but it's a very, very muddy picture. The choppy frame rate has just turned into a smeary mess. So better than nothing, maybe. But again, the lack of audio or the reliability of the audio makes this camera unusable as far as I'm concerned. Right, so... This is the Wansview webcam. So this was the Amazon Choice camera that cost me about £20 or so uh, on a Black Friday deal, I might add. However, it's probably not going to be much more expensive than that uh, on a normal day. Um, in terms of body and construction, uh, this camera was in exactly the same plastic body as the Cheapo cam. Uh, and it is a very cheap body as well. However, this one does have a lens sticking out the front of it that has a manual turn on it so you can tweak the focus. Um, that lens, as you can see, is also giving us 78 degree field of view instead of 60. Um, so we've got a proper normal field of view. However, there's a lot of fish eye on this. There's a huge amount of bend around here, which distorts the picture a fair amount. Um, it's okay for me just sitting in front of the camera. Um, but yeah, it's not ideal really. A normal camera shouldn't have this amount of fisheye on it at all. So this kind of makes it a bit dodgy for content creation unless you want some kind of artistic effect. Um, the actual picture quality is pretty good. Um, the It doesn't have manual exposure, but the auto exposure has done a pretty good job. Um, it does have manual white balance. Um, however, the auto white balance, again, has done a pretty good job. Um, it came with a fair amount of digital sharpening on by default. Digital sharpening was up about here, but as standard. And that made the picture look a little bit grainy to me. So I turned that down to about there-ish, just to soften the picture up a little bit. However, it does look like a decent 1080p picture. Um, at face value, I would say this is quite usable. I quite like it a lot. Uh, let's turn off the lights and see how it does in low light situation. Then we'll turn on the cam the uh, microphone and see how the microphone does. All right, so now I've got all of my studio lights off. And as you can see, it's still doing pretty good. Um, I mean, we've got a fairly contrasty background with this light up here shining behind me. That's making me jump out of the picture. But that's not really any different to if you had a room light on behind you, your desk was up against a wall and the rest of the room is behind you, you get the same kind of effect. Um, so yeah, but my face is reasonably well lit. Um, the color balance hasn't fallen out uh, off the face of the earth. 
Um, and you know, um, the the actual uh, the frame rate of the camera wasn't particularly high, and it's gone a little bit smeary now. But this is fine. Um, you could go on camera like this and talk to the camera and do a vlog or something like that, and this would be a perfectly usable picture. So yeah, not bad going. Uh, let's see if the microphone is any good. So I had a sneaky listen to this microphone before recording, and it's okay. This is usable. I mean, bearing in mind we are going up against a USB condenser microphone, a podcasting mic, and one of the best podcasting mics in my opinion. So uh, obviously there's going to be a steep contrast between what I sounded like just then to how I sound right now. I think that the sound quality isn't too bad. It sounds like I'm in the next room or upstairs, but it hasn't gone really tinny. It hasn't lost the base of my voice. I just sound a bit far away. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't say that this is a good microphone, but it's a viable microphone. Um, yeah, the dynamic range is, is lacking on this one. The noise floor is very high. Uh, it's possible that you could dial in some effects to improve this. However, that's not something that you can really do when you're in Discord or Zoom or something like that without a lot of software running in the background, which isn't really a fair test in my opinion. You know, if you bought this microphone and you gave it to your parents or your grandma to say, here, zoom me with this camera, they're not going to set all that stuff up. So yeah, all in all, not bad. For 20 quid, I think this is all right. I would sell this to someone and say, this is a viable camera. All right, so now we have the Orky camera, which is quite an interesting specimen. The um, picture and colors are okay. Um, the Definition and sharpness is nice enough. Um, the uh, it's overexposing a bit. I had to um, if you put it onto uh, auto exposure, it flickers horribly under a flickery light uh, and does okay. Um, and if I put it in manual exposure with the exposure down cranked all the way down, we're still a bit overexposed. See on my face and on my hands here, we're overexposed. I actually had to bring the gamma down a little bit just to make it look about right. So this would be less of a problem um, if you did not have flickery lights anywhere in sight, which most people probably don't, to be honest. If you're at home, you probably don't have any flickery lights. So you could just auto exposure this and it would do a better job. So this, I'm giving this camera a hard time here. And you know, it's not the camera's fault that I've got a crap light. Um, so yeah, you'll notice we've got this big, huge 90 degree field of view with no fisheye on it whatsoever. So if you want 90 degree field of view, then this camera is right up your street. However, you can't manually change that. And personally, 90 degrees is a bit too wide for most general use. I'm uh, about uh, just under a meter away from the camera right now. So I can't really get much closer to the camera without being sort of leaning into my desk kind of thing. So we've got a lot of wasted space. And for the intended purpose of being, you know, webcams obviously being for, you know, your face on screen, this isn't terribly helpful. Really good if you wanted a room camera though. Um, as you can see, it's quite a cold picture. I can't really do anything to warm this up at all. If I take the white balance off of automatic, we get that, that, or that. That's all I can do. There's no granularity. There's just those steps. And the only way to fix it is to put it back on automatic, which brings us back to that. So the automatic is OK. It's just a bit clinical, which is mainly down to that overexposure issue. Um, and also the anti flicker on it is a bit hit and miss, it seems. So, yeah, um, but that's OK. However, where this camera really makes sense is if we turn off all these studio lights and go down to the low light environment. So. Bear with me a moment. All right, now with all the lights turned off, as you can see, it's still pretty good. So we've got about the same kind of brightness, although oof, the sharpness has stepped up. I'm gonna bring that down to about four, I thought looks about right, there we go. So we've got the same kind of picture quality that we were getting from the WANS view. Um, however, unlike the WANS view, look how much smoother it is. There's a bit of smear, but the actual frame rate is vastly superior. So really, with the Orky, what you're paying for is um, is a much smoother picture and that wide angle. So that's what you might want from it. It's also a much better package as well. Uh, this camera had a better uh, sort of hook mount on it 
that was a bit better. Not quite as good as the Logitech, but definitely getting there. But more importantly, it has swivel on it, so it can look left and right. And even the Logitechs can't do that. And being able to swivel left and right is really good if, like me, you prefer to have your, um, your camera at a slight angle. For me, when I'm streaming and also when I'm making my videos, most of the time, if I'm not presenting directly to the camera like this, I prefer to have the camera at a three-quarter view looking down at me because that avoids that effect of me just staring out of the frame even when I'm not looking at the viewer. And then, so, like, for example, I can be sitting like this playing a game, and then if I want, I can look over to you and say, this is me talking to you, but now I'm playing the game kind of thing. Uh, or a funky keyboard. So, yeah. Uh, as I say, uh, good packaging, and it manages low light really well. That's a good-looking picture. I like it. Uh, let's see if the microphone is any good. Uh, so this microphone appears as a microphone array. We do have stereo mics here, so I'm expecting something better than the other cameras had. So I'm going to record this and then listen back to it. Yeah, it's it's okay. I think it's slightly better than the WANS View camera was. It doesn't sound like I'm underwater, it's a brighter sound, but it's still not great. Um, I mean, again, we are, we are pitching versus a USB condenser microphone here, which is an impossible fight for these microphones. But, you know, again, a headset microphone is still going to give you vastly improved sound. And that's the question here is, you know, in, uh, if you're a single person, you know, if you're the only person on camera, you know, should you use the webcams microphones or should you buy a headset and use that? And really, you know, you should still buy a headset for this thing. It's still not viable. Um, it's usable though, you know, again, fine in a pinch, uh, but I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to go on national radio with this. Right, time for the venerable Logitech C920. So um, straight away, you can see this camera is always going to be one of my favorites. Um, now, you'll notice that the picture is a little bit dark. Uh, one of the weaknesses of this camera is um, if you take it out of auto exposure, well, auto exposure tends to go a little bit low, in my opinion. And if I take it out of auto, I can boost the exposure up, but we lose the anti-flicker. So as you can see, I can easily bring the exposure up and massively brighten up the picture, but we get the strobing from the flickering light. Um, now, if you are at home, you probably don't have a flickering light. Whoops. You probably don't have a flickering light like I do, um, and you wouldn't have this problem. However, I do have a flickering light, so unfortunately, uh, my C920 has a bit of a rough time of it. But as you can see, this is a really nice balanced picture. Uh, it's a little on the cool side, and even though we are on a fairly cool looking picture, it's trying to blow out the reds in my lips. The C920 hates red, basically. If you go on, if you walk in front of this camera with a red t-shirt on, it will just go bah! And that's kind of the weakness in this camera. Uh, however, it does give a really nice view. Um, the field of view is reasonable, um, and that's about it, really. Um, there's lots of options for adjustment with this picture. We do have a tiny bit of zoom. We can do that. We can bring the picture in. So um, you can effectively reproduce having a 60 degree field of view if you want to really come into your face. Or if I want, I can just bring that back out to normal. Uh, and I'm doing this, uh, you can do this either in Logitech settings or I'm using the Windows property window, which is what I've been doing with all the other cameras. So in the interest of fairness, I'm not using Logitech settings right now. I'm ju just using the other thing. Of course, the other thing is now we're on a Logitech camera, we can adjust the focus as well, which means I can manually go to there and have focus up here. Now, this is incredibly useful for two reasons, is that um, um, A, it means you can actually use it for very close up work. If you want to, you can use this as a poor man's microscope. Um, or failing that, it means you can just sort of do other things. You can have a slight autofocus effect. You can bring the focus a little bit closer if you sit very close to the camera. There's options there. Um, so yeah, it's pretty decent, basically. I like this camera a lot. Uh, again, we've got full sharpness controls. We can bring the sharpness up just to add a bit of grain, or we can bring that down to soften it up again. So lots of options, and all of these options have a really, really fine um, gradient of adjustment on them. So you can get everything 
bang on what you want it to be. So yeah, uh, I've always liked this camera. I still think that this is a go-to camera. It's just a shame it's not available right now. Uh, let's see if the microphone on it is very good. I can't remember. All right, so I don't know if my C920 is broken or if it's characteristic of it, but as you can hear, the audio is weighted a little bit to one of the two stereo microphones. Um, but I'm going to speak into it a little bit and then I'll just listen back to this. The dynamic range is pretty good. When I stop talking, the bars go right down. That's a good start. That's promising. Fair play. That's pretty heckin' good as far as I'm concerned. It's quite boomy. Um, I could probably do with putting a limiter on. If I was using this for creative work, if I was um, uh, actually streaming with this, uh, I would stick a limiter on it to cut some of that boom that you can hear. Uh, when we compare it to the condenser, the condenser is not picking up the boom in my voice. It's just it's nice and pleasant, whereas this is very boomy. However, it doesn't sound like I'm under the ocean like the other cameras did. So yeah, the microphones, yeah, way better. So as you can hear, this camera is actually one that can be used for content creation in any kind of serious uh, magnitude, you know. So again, as far as webcams go, again, obviously production equipment is a different ball game, but this is pretty darn good. Let's see how well it does with the, with the lights out. And with the lights off, we get a pretty good picture as well. We've gone a bit softer and there's a little bit more smudge on the motion, but again, that's entirely viable. The issue with the reds, as you can see, the reds are getting exasper exasper exasperated. Uh, the, the issue with it blowing reds out has become worse. Um, if you look at this graphics card behind me here, that's flaring up and my, it looks like I'm wearing lip gloss or something like that. However, the rest of the picture is very cold. So it looks like that you can alleviate, well, this, 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 is, this fits with the reason why I have my lights set up the way I do is that with much better lighting, we, mu we drastically reduce the issue of the reds on this camera. With some slightly warmer lighting, if you, I run my lights at 4700K and that almost eradicates the red problem on my lips. But you can see what I'm talking about with that now. It looks like I've got lipstick on. Um, so yeah. However, the rest of the quality is really good. Um, you go on TV with this and people will be like, yeah, I can see that guy, I can recognize him. So yeah. Um, and with the microphone actually being usable, you can see why Logitech cameras are worth every penny. So that's that. Um, right, past that, one last thing to do. Let's just switch back to the Brio under low lights because I didn't do that at the start. And now we're back onto the Brio under low light conditions. And as you can see, we've got our 60 frames back again. It's lovely and smooth. The dynamic range is better. So, you know, I am, I'm looking nice and soft. We've brought in all the backgrounds. My top looks brighter. You can see my beard again. Just, yeah, this camera is really good. There's no other way to put it. As far as webcams go, this is really good. Um, and also you can see how my lips are not blowing out now. It's the colors are better. It's better all around. Um, uh, just as a final test, I'll just switch to the microphones on this as well. All right, and here's the Brio's microphone. Uh, no idea how well this sounds. I haven't tried it in a long time. So I'm gonna speak for a bit and I'm gonna stop and listen back. That's not too shabby. Uh, it doesn't have the booming problem that the C920 has. It's a bit tinny. It's lost the warmth and the bass in my voice. Um, however, it's very, very clear. The noise reduction is very, very good. I haven't got any filters on this, but it's, you know, the noise reduction is good. Um, and yeah, this is quite clear. It's bright and audible. Um, so yeah, in a perfect world, we want a little bit of a bass boost on it, but it's quite usable. So yeah, again, very impressive. This once again illustrates that Logitech webcams are still worth every penny. Well, they're not worth 150 and 250 a piece, but if you can find a Logitech camera at a good price, it's still going to be miles better than the rest of them. Um, so that's it. And that was the roundup of cheap Amazon webcams. So I hope you guys found that kind of interesting. I hope that was kind of useful as a quick snapshot into the state of webcams at the moment. Um, webcam technology is kind of boring because it hasn't changed a lot in a while, which is kind of frustrating. When the Logitech Brio was first released, I kind of hoped we were going to see a wave of better webcams. Uh, USB 3 webcams or just webcams that had better 
uh, onboard um, processing because uh, the Brio is a, th is a USB 3 webcam because you need that extra bandwidth to get the signal down the wire. There's still almost no other webcams that are doing this and I guess they're expensive to make or something but no one else seems to be doing it. Uh, there's a couple out there but very few of them and I don't see them advertised anywhere which seems surprising considering we're in the age of streamers these days. Um, so yeah, hope that was kind of useful. Stick around for the end card or check in the description down below for links to my Twitter, my Patreon and my Discord channel. And um, I'll put a list of the cameras that I've featured in here today. Uh, I'll try and provide Amazon links for them, but obviously I just picked stuff at random. So uh, I'll, try and, I'll try and give you a list of the cameras that I included. Um, the ca apart from the Logitech cameras, the other ones I tried, which was the Wansview, the Orky and that piece of crap other one, um, these are not specific reviews or recommendations. It's just an example of cert of just cameras that I found at that price point. I was shopping for price, not name or feature set here. The only other stipulation I had for this video was that it has to be 1080p. Don't come at me with a 720p webcam. This is the 21st century. Uh, anyway, that's it. Thanks a lot, everyone. Bye for now.